today. Now, in my previous videos, I talked about animation and I talked about how I'll be doing animation in a next video. And today I wanted to do that. So this video is going to be inspired by this video that I did six years ago. As you can see, I was really into animations. And this video here, and I had done this particular 3D cube in C programming. And it was pretty cool because it was just amazingly how we could actually achieve a lot with OpenGL. But for me in Jetpack Compose, I'm just going to create a cube, a tiny cube that actually rotates instead of just creating um, a circle, which is something that many other people have done already. So I'm trying to just be unique and just showcase how you can use animations and stuff. Now, we're going to go ahead and create a new package. Again, don't create a new project. We can use the already existing project to continue this particular basics that we'll be doing. And then when you need to create another project, we can definitely do that. But for now, we're just going to create a package and call this package animation. There we go. And in this package animation, what we are going to do, we are going to easily just add our own file, Coven file, and call this our rotating, rotating cube. There we go. Now, once we create the rotating cube, what we need is definitely a composable function because this is a composable function. Rotating cube. And then we get started. Now, in this particular rotating cube, what do we just want to achieve? I mean, when you, if you're a visual person, you know what I mean by rotating cube, right? So a, a rotating cube is just a cube that will be there, like it's a cube, but then it will be rotated. Now, I don't think I can achieve a 3D cube if I'm being honest, because I've not tried to do that yet, but it's something that I can definitely try to do and see if I will achieve it some, some other time. Now, uh, so that this video is not very long too, because as I promised, I don't want to make sure, I don't want to be going past 25 minute long videos or even one hour long videos. I want to make sure people can get as much as they can get in early in advance. I wanted to do something cool with Canvas because Canvas is now pretty popular and it can really help you build pretty good UI animations in your applications, especially if you're building games. Because I feel like um, like if you used Java before, Java was the language that I used for the longest and we would definitely use Canvas too there and it was pretty cool being able to draw animations and draw stuff. It was pretty hard, of course, not easy, but it was pretty cool when you see the animations come to love. Now, I think I will need a curtain scope because I will launch my animation inside the curtain scope. Uh, so here, oh, I need to do the remember curtain scope. And then definitely need the rotations because I want this particular cube to rotate. So I will need to create a rotation. Oh, rotation. And here I will need the remember, but then I'll be using the animatable. Animatable. We'll also look at what is animatable in a few minutes. Uh, let's make sure we import this. That's imported. There we go. And then as you can see here, according to the description is, this animatable function creates a float value holder that automatically animates its value when the value is changed via animate to animatable. And then it supports value changes during ongoing, an ongoing value change animation. When that happens, a new animation will, re, will transition animatable from its current value, i.e. value at the point of interruption, interruption to the new target. So for the beginning, I think we can just go with zero as our initial value, because we will need to update that later. As I mentioned, we're going to use a uh, launched effect, because this is where we will be launching our current, our current scope. And here we will need to definitely pass the key. Instead of saying now, we can just pass to the value to true. And what we'll do here in this particular current scope, we'll call our current scope and launch. And inside this launch, what we're doing again, as I mentioned, is just taking that rotation 
uh, rotation dot animate to as we had read and here what we're going to have is that we're going to see what it takes it takes a target value float animation spec um, and then it takes an initial velocity and it has a block but what we're going to do we're just going to take the target value first and the target value is I'm going to tell this I need it to rotate 360 degrees now I will also need to tell it, hey, look, so in my animation spec, because it has the animation spec, skip, spec, <laughs> I want it to repeat infinitely, which means like it's just going around infinitely. You can definitely make these adjustments when you're building your own, but for mine right now, I just wanted to rotate around because that's what the video that I showed you on my 3d animation which i did in c does it just rotates infinitely so i'm trying to see if i can recreate something similar to that now so the twin here what i'm going to do is i'm going to take duration uh let me see if i can import and see okay i'm going to import the twin so in the twin we can check what the twin takes and uh, it creates a twin spec configured with a given duration, delay, and ease in curve. As you can see there, the twin can take duration, millis, delay, millis, and then ease in. And then also highly recommend, like I mentioned, I, do, I cannot memorize all these things, like what this does exactly to the complete detail. But you can always Google and just try to understand what this does. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the duration, millis, as you, it mentioned. And if you're wondering how I know what i get there is because when you clicked here you could see it takes the duration really delay millis and easing so those are the things that we might need to take it's the others are actually nullable so it means you don't need to pass it if you don't need it so i can say hey maybe i don't need that but here i think i can take the linear easy we can also check what is linear easing and as you can see here it returns fraction unmodified this is useful as a default value for case where an easing is required, but not actual easing is desired. So as you can see there, that's a definition. Now, we can also do the repeat mode because I said I wanted to have that. So here I'm going to say repeat mode dot restart. Now, there we go. We have, let me clean up my code and format it. So here is where our curtain scope ends. Now, so what we've done here, we've just created this code in scope in which we will launch our animation. Now, the rotation, as I explained, an animatable float value is used to hold and animate the rotation degree of the cube that we created. When we talked about the launched effect, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is used to launch side effects like animation in Compose, and it also ensures that the animation runs when the composable enters the composition and not on every recomposition. So that's why it's important to have that. Now, also inside our launched effect, in fact, as you can see, I have the rotation dot animate to, which is, which is what I called here, which is, as you can notice here, it's from the animatable. When you see it here, when you see here, see here, animate to, it is from animatable. So this one here just animates the rotation from zero to 360 degree infinitely, like I mentioned. You just, let's do this infinitely. Now let's get to the juicy part, which is drawing the cube itself. So I'm not gonna lie, for those who don't know, I'm a huge math fan. It's, uh, I, I, I like to do math on my own time, just free time. And one of the things that I love about math is you're able to play around. And also, if you love animations, you love this because it's something you're able to play with the numbers and see what that can build. Now, okay, so now we will need to create the canvas. And what we will need to do is we'll just need to call the canvas, the canvas. And as you can see, it takes a modifier and then on draw. So what we're going to do here in the modifier, I'm just going to tell it to fill max width. Modifier dot fill max width. I don't, um, actually I should say fill max size. So I'm going to tell it modifier dot fill max size, fill max size. And then here I'm just going to draw now now 
When we start drawing this particular cube, the way I will think about it is that first I want this particular cube to have a size of 500 width and height. So I'm going to create a vowel cube size and the size is going to be size. So we need this size which has a float of a width and a float of height. So again, as you can see, you can always hover around just as you can see how I normally code. And as you can see this particular size here takes the width and height. Now, I will need now to do the calculation for the cube position because I want this particular position to be in the center. So what I will do is that I will create a cube position. And in this particular cube position, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the offset of X and Y. And as you know, the X and Y, so when if you're a visual person, this is X and this is Y. So what I'm going to say is that in my X, I need to get the, the size dot width, and then I'm going to subtract by the cube size dot width, and then I'm going to divide by two. And for my Y axis, I'm going to do again, size dot height, and then I'm going to subtract to my cube size dot height, divide by two. Now, I have to say, I truly do enjoy doing math. For those who don't know, I am a pretty big math aficionado. So <laughs> if you see me doing this, know that I truly, truly enjoy this. Now, I want this. So if you saw in the beginning, I showed you, I wanted to create something similar to the 3D cube. I'm not, I don't think I can achieve a 3D cube, but I'm going to achieve a cube. So I'm going to create a color gradient for this particular cube. So I need the colors. So to create a color grid, what you just need is just a list of colors. And this can just be colors.red, uh, colors dot uh, magenta, because I need just a color, that, a gradient that will look more like a rainbow, but not like a rainbow. And then I can say color dot tint. And then I can do colors dot blue dot blue and then I can do color dot yeah let me get a yellow colors dot yellow color dot you know, let's let's do red and green that's a completely rainbow right color dot green okay so I have this list of colors that I want to create in this particular gradient. So if you've played around with Compose, you'll know that to have a gradient, you need to brush, like it's like a painter. So you need to call the brush. And in this brush, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like a linear gradient, linear gradient. And guess what I'm going to pass? My list of colors. There. So what we've done so far, we've created this canvas that has a cube size and a cube position. The cube position again, as you can see, the size first is 500 by 500. The cube size again, we're just taking the width and the size, sorry, the width and the height and dividing by two. So what we're going to do next is we're going to now do our rotation, which is now rotate. This is where the part where it gets interesting. So when we rotate, what we're going to do is that the degrees of our rotation is going to come from the float that we created. That's the rotation dot, oops, not that, but the rotation dot value because we need to get that value. And then what's going to happen here in this draw scape, we're just going to draw the rack. Draw. And here's where you can, you, and you see that? You can draw circle there, you can draw rect, you can draw image, you can draw line, you can draw over, you can draw as many things. And that's why I find Compose has a lot of power because look at how creating animation is easy for us now. Pretty easy, right? Like just following this, Okay, I promise I want to be saying easy because it's not easy for everyone. But the more you do it, again, I just have to put that there. I like to ensure that all the concepts, they're not hard to learn. It's things that definitely with, with when you do, do it over time, you, became, you become better at it. It's not just one day and then you're good. No, it takes time. And then you, you become good at it. So here we're just going to take the draw rect. As you can see, it takes a brush top left. It has a size. It takes an alpha all those things that it has there. But what I will need is just a brush for now. And what I'm doing the brush again, what am I doing? Taking the gradient. Now, what am I doing with the top left? So for the top left, what I want is I just want this to be the cube position. 
And then finally, the size is just going to be what, if you can guess? Post the video and see if you can figure out what the size would be. But the size will be cube size. Now, if I ask you, do you think we already have a complete, like a complete cube where you can see? Hmm. I think, yeah. Now, again, the cube position just calculates the position of the cube so it's centered on the screen as I mentioned, nothing very complicated there. And as you've noticed, we've not done anything complicated. Now, the rotate function that applies rotation to its content based on the rotation value that we've defined. And then the draw rect, that is just a draw rectangle representing the cube with a specified gradient that we've just specified there. And now to see if this works, we are just going to um, no, remove any unused input and format our code. And then I'm going to take this. Oh, I don't know what happened. There. Sometimes my screen goes blank, but I notice in the video it doesn't. So good, good for me. So I'm going to comment this out because again, we're using this project for all this. And I'm going to import that and I'm going to run. And we should have a rotating kind of like cube, but just not a three cube as I would want, because I think we will definitely need an open GL if I'm not very wrong about that in Compose. But I've, I wonder if somebody has done it, I would like to really, really see. Now, uh, install successful means it's launched. And as you can see, oh, there we go. See, we have rotating pretty cool gradient kind of and again we def we told this to rotate infinite infinitely so that's it's rotating infinitely I'm going to take a screenshot of that and yeah so we can draw as many so in the next video I'm just going to do one more animation to showcase more animation and just showcase how you can achieve animation pretty easily in compose as compared to back in the days where it was pretty tough. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and as you see, this square just rotates around the center. And uh, it might give you an illusion of a rotating cube. So it's not bad. It's not as similar to what I wanted to achieve here. This here. This was cooler. This was way cooler. I would have wanted to achieve this, but. not possible. <laughs> Thank you very much and watch it for the next animation video.